Welcome to worship today at Zion. As we uh, gather here, this is the third Sunday of Easter. We continue to hear the message of the good news of the new life in Christ. Um, we, uh, we also hold that word closely to our hearts when we know that our loved ones leave this life and our, um, our hearts go out to Darlene Olson and, uh, and Doug and Darla and family. Um, Don Olson passed away this last week. It was on Thursday. And uh, his, the visitation for Don will be held here at Zion this afternoon from 4.30 to 7 in the Fellowship Hall. And uh, Don's funeral will be held here tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. So uh, we remember Don. We keep uh, his family in our prayers uh, and, uh, and the blessings of the new life. As we continue with our service today, uh, everything is in the bulletin. We thank Rob Mondlock for joining us again today as our choir director. Uh, Vicki is gone, so we uh, are grateful for Rob's uh, leadership for our choir. And um, our eighth grade kids going to Bible camp are serving the coffee hour today. We've got a lot of kids going to Bible camp this year, so yay. Kids, yay Bible camp, um, and yay you for, uh, for being here as well. Um, the, the donation at the coffee hour helps them uh, with their, uh, their trip to Bible camp this summer. So uh, we, we are grateful for that. We continue our worship now as we sing hymn number 383, Christ is Risen, Shout Hosanna, 383. continue in the front portion of our hymnal on page 94. We come together to confess our sin and also to receive the Lord's gift of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, 
all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We continue on page 203. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear our solemn prayer. We join together as we offer the prayer of the day. Let us pray. 
O eternal and all-merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Acts 9. It's uh, Saul's dramatic conversion. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but, not, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In, Dismas in Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up, was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. A second reading is from Rev Revelations 5. In verses, in verses prior to these, there's a, a mention of the, the lamb, the slaughtered lamb, as in the sacrificial lamb that Jesus was. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a low, loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Here ends the readings.
Thank you so much. What a beautiful, beautiful song. I shall not want. I shall not lack. I shall have everything that is needed. Everything. Let's take a moment to pray. Gracious God, you promise us so many great things. And there are times that we don't see that, and there are times that we think we can do better. And so we ask that you would help us to humbly open our hearts to you and to your word, and that, that we would find that you would show us the way, and that our spirits would be willing to follow where you lead the way. We are here in your name, Jesus. Amen. So we, uh, in, the, in the reading from Acts today, we meet Saul of Tarsus. Saul was the kind of guy you wanted to be in charge because if he said he was going to get something done, it would get done, even the tough stuff. Saul would step in, ask no questions, roll over the slackers, and get it done. Saul had a hard edge. He knew right from wrong better than anyone else. <laughs> He knew right from wrong, and if he said you were wrong, you'd just better agree with him. If you disagreed with Saul, he would take you down. Well, not that so much, really. If you disagreed with Saul, he would kill you. Saul was not a mafia hitman, but a defender of the faith. Now, we sometimes think that people of faith should be loving and kind, don't we? <laughs> well, that was not Saul's style. Until, until he met Jesus. And then everything changed. Today we heard the account of Saul's conversion. As Telford said, this is an amazing account. This is, this is a dramatic account. The light, the sound, the voice of God saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Persecuting God? <laughs> really? What do you get when you try to kill God? Seems like a serious offense, right? trying to kill God, persecuting God? This is the story of Saul of Tarsus and God's response to this dreaded man. So as we read these words, we might want to think about three things. What can we learn about Saul? What can we learn about God and what can we learn about ourselves? We get quite a picture of Saul. He tells his own story in the book of Acts. Other places throughout the New Testament, uh, he, he wrote most of the books of the New Testament. So he tells his, the story of his life, how he sought to persecute Christians. He killed or had Christians killed because they believed differently than he believed. You might call that intolerance. We see some of that in our world today, killing people for lack of same belief. And as I think of this horrible man, Saul of Tarsus, it makes me wonder what do we do with people who intentionally seek to kill Christians? What do we do with people like that? Well, that question, that particular question, is not answered in today's Bible readings, but we are told what God would do with people like that. We are told what God would do with the killer, the persecutor, the person like Saul. God, it seems, would provide a way 
to rebirth. Undeniably, we would not be so gracious. I don't think any of us would be so gracious. The Bible shows us over and over again why it is a good thing that none of us is God. <laughs> Even if we would like to be some days. But God is God. And God knows what to do. God knew what to do with the hater, Saul. God knew what to do with the killer, Saul. God knew what to do with the persecutor of Christians. God showed Saul the way to a new life. Literally, God showed Saul the way. Okay, that is what the early Christians were known by. That was their name, the way. Identified here in Acts chapter 9, verse 2. In Damascus, Saul found any there who belonged to the way. That name shows up in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus identifies himself. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. John 14, verse 6. And so the earliest of Christians were known by that name of Jesus. The way, the way to God, the way to salvation, the way to life, the way to live our lives. And God somehow took away Saul's old way of seeing things and gave him new sight. In a few moments, we'll be singing that prayer. A beautiful hymn. I love this prayer. Be thou my vision. O Lord of my heart. God led Saul to a man named Ananias. Ananias was afraid of Saul like everybody else was afraid of Saul. But God sent Saul to meet Ananias, we are told in Acts 9 verse 11. And there we are told that God chose Saul. I would guess that if you or I were God and we all remember that neither you nor I are God. But if we were, we would not have chosen Saul or anyone like him. We would have probably come up with a much better alternative, a more pious person, or actually probably a much less pious person, because Saul claimed to be the most pious person in the world. <laughs> we definitely would want, not want someone as religious as him to be in charge of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ananias would not have chosen Saul either. He, he basically said to Jesus, do you know who this guy is? And even Saul would not have chosen himself to be a witness to the way of Jesus Christ. But God seems to do things in a very, very different way than anyone would ever expect. Doing the unforeseen, God sought out Saul, this horrible killer, but God did not seek revenge. God did not ask his people to seek revenge either, to get rid of this horrible guy so that we could do our church thing in our own particular way. God gave Saul what is called the way. God did not kill Saul, even though Saul had killed or was responsible for killing numerous Christians. God did not seek revenge, but God did want Saul's life. And Saul, having met the powerful grace of God, let go and gave his life to Jesus. The song that the hymn that we sang at the beginning of this service, I don't think I've ever sung it before. You know how, how reticent we are to try new things? <laughs> I, would, I would not have chosen that hymn either. Um, but thanks to someone who does choose hymns that we got to try something new today. There's a line in that song, Christ is risen, shout Hosanna, that kind of stops me and it's really sad. See what love and dare. 
see what love can do. He gave his life to Jesus. When we come across those times of pain or struggle in our own lives, even persecution, we do our worst when we seek revenge. We do our best when we let God just have our lives. Have it, God, this is it, this is all I've got, it's yours. And come life or death, we belong to God. And God knows what to do with this life. Whether I live or whether I die, God knows what to do with this life. And the same with you. In the telling of the conversion of Saul, the persecutor, he became Paul, the persecuted, the apostle. God showed the way. God showed him Jesus. God is the way. God is the truth. God is the life. And here in this short reading from Acts chapter 9, we see all the things that God would do. In, nine, in chapter 9, verse 8, after Saul lost his sight, we are told that Saul was led to Damascus. Somebody else was doing the leading, right? In verse 10, God spoke to him. In verse 11, God sent Saul to a man of prayer. In verse 12, God sent a vision. In verse 15, God gave Saul a calling to be God's servant. In verse 18, God gave Saul new sight. In verse 19, God gave Saul strength and fellowship. In verse 20, God gave Saul a voice with good news. And later in Acts 13 verse 9, God even gave Saul a new name. Paul, apostle to the Gentiles. As we read this, we find that God did absolutely everything. God gave it all even for this despicable Saul. And today God is giving us his grace and new life and hope and God gives us Jesus Christ the way. And nothing can change that. Not life, not death, nothing can change what God has done for us. Paul shared the same message with the church in Rome as they were facing difficulties in life and faith. In Romans 8, he says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Paul knew that promise firsthand. God did not accept Paul after he changed his evil ways. God accepted Paul before he changed. God accepted Saul in his sin, in his hatred. God accepted Saul in his self-righteous fury. And because of that love of God, Saul then saw the light. Saul came to follow the way, Jesus. The same is true of you and me and everyone else on the face of this earth. God's love is the greatest motivator and changer. When we are tempted to discharge hatred and retribution in the face of hatred that we have received, God shows us the way to the cross. Let it go. And it is in dying to our own will and ways that we receive new life and in dying, God's word shows us the power of the new life in Christ. It is completely contrary to our way of seeing life. But God's way is Jesus. And we have come through the horrors 
of Holy Week and through the light of the Easter resurrection. Let us carry that same light of Christ and new life with us into this world and the love of God guaranteed. The love of God will change hearts. God's word is true. God's word is Jesus Christ. And God's word is the way. Amen. We continue our worship now with hymn number 793. It is a prayer, Be Thou My Vision. confess our faith now with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We take a moment as we share our gifts and offerings. <clears throat>
Father, as we come to this time of worship, your word always challenges us. Your word always offers us a new life. There are times that we are pretty much satisfied with the old life we've already got. But you show us a new way. And when it is difficult for us to understand, we pray that your spirit would open our hearts and our minds to your grace and your love. Help us to dare to live in that love as the hymn proclaimed. Help us to see that you are our way of seeing the world. And as we look at this world through the eyes of Christ, we see first the cross and then we see the new life. We ask that you would enrich our lives as we live together as brothers and sisters in the faith and that we would support our other brothers and sisters throughout the world, that we would live together and as people of prayer, and that your word would inform who we are and how we live. We thank you for the blessing of the new life, and we entrust our brother Don Olson into that new life even this day. As we come together today and tomorrow to celebrate his life, May we also place our lives into your care. We thank you for the gift of uh, youth and the, the wonder of our young people in our church. And as uh, many of our kids plan to attend Bible camp this summer, we pray that now is the time that we would prepare our hearts to receive your word and to receive the joy of fellowship we entrust all our times into your care. We take a moment for our own silent prayer at this time. And we offer the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord, I pleaded with my Lord, saying, what profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Amen. Would you please stand as we receive the blessing? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor 
and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We go in peace now to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn, number 545, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. with you.